Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to part two of our evaluation of the suspected renal mass, key differential diagnosis points. And I mentioned last time that the key, of course, is the timing of the acquisition, depending whether you're looking at arterial phase or nephrographic or venous phase or excretory phase, a renal mass is going to look different. The vascular lesions will be very bright on the cortical medullary or arterial phase, but they'll all be relatively hypodense on the excretory phase. So how lesions enhance are going to be very, very important to us in allowing us to make the diagnosis and be very specific, but also allow us to stage the tumor correctly. If I think of the, about the cortical medullary phase, it's about 30 seconds after injection of contrast. We like to inject at 5 cc's a second, 100 to 120 cc's of contrast. It's the time when the cortex is maximally enhanced, reaching about 150 Hounsfield units, and the medullary enhancement is low, under 60 Hounsfield units. So the cortex medullary differentiation is really well seen. It's optimal for evaluating arterial structures, optimal for preoperative planning for nephron spanning surgery. It defines the tumor vascularity and in many cases, therefore, defines the specific etiology of the tumor. It's excellent for detecting changes, even subtle ones in perfusion. And some tumors will only be seen in arterial phase. So it's excellent at tumor detection. It probably is not the optimal phase if you were looking for polynephritis. There, a later phase, particularly excretory phase or late venous phase, is better, but it's still usually accurate. Here's just examples taking a look at that cortical medullary phase with both volume rendering and MIP imaging. The MIP being a projection technique showing you the vessels, the volume rendering showing you the cortical medullary interface a whole lot better. You can see also an example of a renal cell, clear cell renal cell carcinoma, both on the volume rendering and the MIP. MIP often is good for picking up small AVMs within a lesion. It's also good at looking at angiomyelipomas for tiny aneurysms. But you can see all of that with volume rendering. But volume rendering gives you a far better 3D visualization. This is going back a bit, but this article has held true over time. Clear cell renal cell carcinoma, the mean attenuation value is 152, and in papillary, it's 61. So you can see there's a big spread between 152 and 61. And so what most people will say, and it works out very nicely, if a lesion measures under 100 Hounsfield units max, it's likely a papillary, and it's over 100, it's likely a clear cell, and you'll be probably 95% accurate. Here's a non-contrast scan, solid right renal mass, faint calcification. This lesion, which measures five centimeters, is markedly vascular. This is the hallmark of a clear cell renal cell carcinoma. You can see how it hangs off the lower aspect of the kidney. This would be ideal, particularly on the volume rendered views, for a partial nephrectomy. And here's the lesion on the excretory phase, well-defined, but it washes out. On the excretory phase imaging, you're not going to be able to distinguish typically between a clear cell and a papillary or anything else because everything tends to wash out and you're not really measuring percent washout value. Here's that same case with cinematic rendering, nicely showing you the tumor, the vascularity, and the interface to the normal kidney. The cinematic renderings are particularly helpful in partial nephrectomy. Here's the same case looking at the image from behind, which might be the surgical approach. It's a really nice look at the patient's mass and what the surgeon would need to do. Another example, another mass, large mass, lower pole right kidney involving lower and mid pole of the kidney, very vascular, though the center is somewhat low density. One of the things we see with clear cell is that tumors are often necrotic. The more necrotic the tumors are, the more aggressive they typically are. Here's showing you the uh, volume rendering and the MIP imaging, nicely showing you the neovascularity, nicely showing the central necrosis. Here's the same imaging on arterial phase with the cinematic, again, the central necrosis, the peripheral tumor vascularity. Or another case, 
Again, a clear cell, and all I'm showing you to begin with are going to be the clear cells, large vascular lesion, but this case is a bit different. Now, we usually say when the masses are larger, they're more likely clear cell, and indeed that is true. Papillaries are usually smaller, but I will admit papillaries can be large. This is a good example of a large tumor, extensive adenopathy, but the tumor is not very vascular. So one of the things to remember is that clear cell are not always going to be hypervascular. They're typically larger, but again, not always than papillary renal cell carcinoma and very nice neovascularity as well as adenopathy seen as we go through the arterial, venous, and the excretory phase images. In talking about the attenuation values of clear cell versus papillary, accuracy 95.7%, sensitivity 98.3%, and 92% specificity with 100 as the cutoff value. And that's the value I mentioned today. The higher a lesion is over 100, the more likely it is a clear cell. And as we said, if it's 150, it's always going to be a clear cell. Now, the reason there is a challenge sometimes and why it's not 100% is about 10% of clear cells, just like I showed you a large mass, are not hypervascular. And so those are the ones that are going to be somewhat challenging. Imaging features at multiphasic MDCT correlate also with the cytogenetic characterization of clear cells. And so this may affect patient prognosis and help predict responses to molecular targeted therapies. A lot of work is going on using things like radiomics, using AI to try to predict responsive therapy based on the enhancement because the enhancement correlates very well with the genetic makeup of the tumors. A comment at the end, histologically defined tumor necrosis is integrated into prognostic scoring systems such as the stage, size, grade, and necrosis score. Here's a good example of a large vascular right renal mass with central necrosis. There's some perirenal spread and adenopathy also seen. The MIP imaging nicely shows the neovascularity present. But again, the central necrosis becomes very important. We have shown, and others have shown as well, that with central necrosis, patients do poorer. We're going to have to think about better ways of treating these patients as the tumors appear to be more aggressive. So central necrosis and quantification of central necrosis is becoming something interesting. And here it is nicely shown on the cinematic rendering as well. Now, in this article by Ahmed, non-enhancing tumor on pre-op CT in, in patients with clear cell renal cell carcinoma correlates with tumor necrosis and stage and may serve as an independent imaging prognostic biomarker for cancer recurrence and cancer-specific survival. So we are learning to look more and more. Again, another example, vascular lesion, lots of necrosis in the left kidney, the necrosis is often better appreciated on the volume rendering than the MIP imaging. Also particularly well seen when we look at cinematic rendering, we tried to figure out the ways of better quantifying the degree of necrosis. How do you measure it? What phase? And how do you make it to be consistent? But again, on the excretory phase, very nicely showing you the central necrosis, the thickened tumor wall, and some residual neovascularity. And here it is again in the cinematic. It's our experience that the cinematic rendering is much better because cinematic rendering does the texture mapping, which could create volumes of areas of necrosis, again shown here as well, and its relationship to the renal vein and renal artery. Another example, large left renal mass, vein calcification, solid mass, central necrosis, vascular, Clear cell renal cell carcinoma based on vascularity over 160. The central necrosis means that it's an aggressive tumor. I guess based on the vascularity and its size, we know it's aggressive, but this is not a tumor that's going to do well. The patient will need a nephrectomy, chemotherapy, but this tumor is aggressive and the likelihood of cure is going to be much more difficult. That's why lots of work being done to look at different modes of treating these patients. And again, as we go through the imaging sequence, you can very nicely see the necrosis. 
which shows that all phases, the quantity of necrosis may vary between phases, but again, um, we can be somewhat consistent in this. Another case, solid renal mass, significant neovascularity, renal vein involvement, lots of collaterals, and tumor around the kidney proper, shown very well on these images as well. Look at the coronal display, the neovascularity, the irregular margins, the aggressiveness of this tumor, very clear. Here's the same patient on volume rendering with a spread to vessels, the neovascularity, the local tumor spread, and again, same patient as we go to the venous phase imaging, cinematic rendering again. So one thing I should re-emphasize is look how many images I'm showing you. Look at the different phases. Again, we're trying to figure out how to maximize the information on these patients. It's not enough to say the patient has a renal mass. We're saying it's a renal mass and it's a clear cell. We're saying there's necrosis, which makes it a more complicated management decision for that patient. We have done some work with cinematic. There's an article by Steve Rowe and the guys um, talking about cinematic rendering. We describe a number of, of normal variants and pathologic conditions visualized with CR. We provide comparisons of CR tra to traditional imaging. So one of the things we're looking at with cinematic is we're building on top of what we've always done before. Again, things like necrosis, things like preoperative planning, things like vascular involvement are all things with cinematic rendering really excels. And this is a very good article. And we're continuing to do work on the kidney using cinematic rendering. Some more examples, vascular lesion left kidney solid, central necrosis, neovascularity, clear cell renal cell carcinoma. It's unusual to see this kind of vascularity in a papillary renal cell carcinoma or even a chromophobe tumor. Here it is again, posterior view from the cinematic rendering as the surgeon was doing preoperative planning, whether or not a partial nephrectomy could be done in this patient. Uh, it was not done because the tumor was extending just too far centrally. But again, look at the different renderings we can use. And again, it's important to be able to provide this information to the referring clinician. And just a few more images. Uh, ideally, you would like to use uh, goggles, you know, using the headsets. Soon you might be using Apple headsets, but now we're using the HoloLens. And with renal tumors, this can be very valuable. There are different uh, variants of renal cell, particularly clear cell. A lot of work is being done to subclassify, and this is really more on the pathology side. You can see a right renal mass with necrosis. The lesion is not very vascular when you look at the arterial phase imaging. It's really more infiltrating. I have to admit, I look at this, and I'm thinking about a clear cell renal cell carcinoma. Just the way the tumor infiltrates and you can see it on the venous phase, this infiltration, the dilated calyces, the stretching of vessels and the low density uh, components due to lack of enhancement in the lower two thirds of the kidneys. Again, nicely shown on the cinematic rendering, but this was an unusual tumor. It was a rhabdoid variant. So again, we really need to learn more and the pathologists are trying to figure out ways of classifying things differently. I'm not certain that we're gonna be as successful as they are in dividing things up into many categories, but there are certain specific factors we can look at. And this is a very interesting example. Now, the next thing we can look at is papillary renal cell carcinomas. They're typically small. They're usually hypovascular. They can be multifocal and bilateral. The prognosis is better and they're ideal for partial nephrectomies. They're ideal also when small to simply watch. They're typically hypovascular and homogeneous. And uh, this article going way back with Brian Hertz makes the point nicely. And again, typically average attenuation, no more than in the mid 60 Hounsfield units. And the rule again is under 100 or even under 90, it's a papillary RCC. Here's a solid mass. Now I mentioned papillaries are often small, but not necessarily, but this lesion is homogeneous with really no vascularity present to any degree. It is enhancing, but enhancing no more than 70 or 80 Hounsfield units. 
And here it is on the excretory phase image as well. And here it is nicely shown with the cinematic rendering. Now, the next thing we'll look at in terms of the kidneys will be the parenchymal and nephrographic phase. I've showed you some cases of nephrographic phase as we were going through the images. It's the phase where you can see the renal veins very nicely. It's an ideal phase for looking at vascular involvement when you're staging tumors. It's a good phase for looking at infection, and it does provide things a bit different than the arterial or cortical medullary phase does. But let's do this. Let's stop here, and let's come back in a few minutes and take a look at the parenchymal and nephrographic phase, as well as the excretory phase, and then look, let's look at some more tumors. See you back in a few minutes. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.